Hello and welcome to another Tractor Control SA mini tutorial and this one is about beat gridding. Now, beat gridding is where Tractor puts a nice even grid, imagine a ruler along the waveform of your, tra of your track, uh, over your tracks and it allows you to do all kinds of cool things. It lets the looping work, lets the moving through the track work seamlessly, it lets effects work properly, like things like echo and delay, you know, that are delaying on a quarter beat or on a half beat. Tractor's got to know where the beats are in order for that to happen. It lets things like quantize do their job properly. It's really important and it's really important with the Tractor Control S8 because the whole workflow is built around having tightly beat gridded tracks. There's nothing cheating about beat gridding even though it doesn't make the sync button work properly because because when you've got like a couple of tracks playing, a few remix decks and you're messing around with stuff, you don't want to be manually beat gridding everything and that's what the SA is trying to move people away from. It's moving towards being more creative with the, the limited amount of brain time you've got. And beat gridding, beat gridding is a great way, in fact with the SA, pretty much an essential way of doing that. So the problem with beat gridding in the past has been that you have to do it ahead of time. You have to prepare ahead of time. You have to be organized. And it kind of, to some DJs, takes the spontaneity out of stuff. And when you get to your gig, it's not really the time to be messing with the beat grid controls in tracks. And look at your manual and read about beat gridding. In fact, I, I recommend you do that if you're following this tutorial and you're not sure about beat grids because you need to understand what tracks is doing before you can understand what the S8 does. But look in your manual at beat gridding and you'll see that it's very powerful but it's also not the kind of thing you want to be involved in when you're actually performing. Because that would be like, A, it would be a bit involved, B, you'd be there looking at your laptop with your hand on the mouse and the trackpad, looking like you're checking Facebook or something. It's just not a performance oriented kind of thing. So the problems are that it's not performance oriented and you have to do it ahead of time. So therefore, you're stuck in this workflow that you might find quite constricting. What I'm going to show you today blows all that out of the water. Now, it relies on two things. Number one, Tractor does its own beat grid for you every time it analyzes a song, and it normally gets it right. If you've been using that as your kind of crux so far, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. You can generally trust Tractor to get it right. The trouble is it doesn't always get it right. So number two, number one, let Tractor beat grid your tracks automatically. Make sure when you analyze them, they get a beat grid put on them. And number two, use the functions in the Tractor Control S8 on the screen in order to beat grid your tracks there and then, or rather to check the beat grid that you, that's already been made for your tracks there and then. It can take as little as a second just to go bang, bang, that looks all right. And if it's wrong, 30 seconds to put it right. As you're about to see, you can do it all in your headphones with a new track that you're not used to beforehand. And the beauty of it is that once you've finished it, you can lock it away and you know that track's always gonna be good forever. So let's have a look at how to do it. So let's imagine this track I've just loaded on here is the track we want to play next. And we wanna quickly check the beat gridding in our headphones before we, we mix this track into the track that's playing to our club, to our audience on the other deck. So. The first thing we need to do is just have a quick revision of what we're looking at here. This number one on a, on a white flag is where Tractor's auto beat gridding thinks the first beat of the track is. This is right at the beginning, so it looks like it's got that right. And these subsequent lines are where it thinks the next beats are. Let's hit play and just have a listen to this track. Remember, this would normally be in our headphones. And you can see those lines going by. We can zoom out a little bit. You can see lots of them and zoom in and see more closely whether it's hitting bang on the beat. Looks pretty good to me that. It's a pretty uniform house track. It all looks like it's following the right pattern. So we're gonna guess that this track's all right, but we're gonna check the beat gridding using the beat grid functions just to make certain. So I'm gonna go right back to the beginning of that track there now, and I'm gonna turn on the beat gridding mode by pressing edit here. Now something's happened here. We now have the first four beats from where the playhead was, not from where the first flag was. It was actually one and the same here because we're at the beginning of the track, but it will always freeze four beats where, where you're currently playing. Freeze the nearest whole bar, whole four beat section from where, where you're currently playing and that's what you're gonna be working on. So now when I press play, you'll see that the red playhead will just disappear off into the distance. One, two, three, four and gone to be replaced by this white one. This is showing us where we are in the track and these lines are showing us the beat grid and we're gonna adjust it using this first four beats. So there's a couple of things that you need to be aware, be aware of when you're adjusting the beat grid. The first thing is that the number one, the first beat marker is in the right place. And that means these lines will then all subsequently drop right before the beat that they represent. This knob here lets you change that. So let's move this knob. You see all four are moving. So the whole grid is being moved backwards and forwards on top of the actual track. 
So if I press this button here, which is tick or metronome, it puts an audible noise every time the playhead goes past one of those lines. So you can hear that it's in the right place or not as the case may be. Let's make it a little bit late. So you, visually these are just past their beats now, but also when the beat kicks in now, you'll hear it clear as day. Remember this is only gonna be happening in your headphones. That click will never go out to your audience. And I'm using this knob here to get it right. That's a little bit too, too soon. That sounds about right, and it looks about right as well. The second thing is the BPM. You see, you could have that beat marker on the right position, but if the BPM is slightly out, then as the track plays, it's gonna drift and drift and drift. So these two knobs here adjust the BPM. This one does it coarsely, and this one does it very fine. One BPM, one hundredth of a BPM. So you can hear the metronome is adjusting to show that I'm now 0.2 of a BPM too slow and the grid will go slightly out because we're right at the beginning of the track here, it won't go out very far, but we can use this knob here to adjust further into the track without actually affecting what we're listening to. So this is moving forward in the track, moving to any point we want in the track, just so we can inspect where the beat grid sits over it. Now here you can see these lines are just random through the track, they're not landing on any beats and that's because the BPM is wrong. So we can adjust the BPM and have a look at those lines. We know 127 is about right. Suddenly they look right again, and they sound right again. So we're kind of halfway through the track here using this knob. This is very useful if you want to adjust the BPM on a live track where you're actually playing because you can use the metronome and you can use this to fly through the track and make sure you've got your BPM perfectly right without anyone ever hearing it, apart from you and your headphones. So by adjusting, the start point and by using the coarse and fine adjustments here to adjust the BPM and by using the metronome to listen to it and by using this knob to scan through the track, to scan all the way to the end if I wanted, we can be pretty sure we've got our BPM exactly right because if it's right at the end, if we're right at the end here, you can see there's a still landing bang on the beats. If it's correct at the end and it's correct at the beginning as we know, we can be pretty sure that it's gonna be correct here. So, a couple of tips. The first tip is, if the BPM is wildly out, assume it's either double or half. If that said like, you know, 63 and a half, then I'm gonna guess that it's, it's wildly out, it's just half what it should be. Get it, get it to what it should be, double it or half it. That's the first tip. That's one of the first mistakes that Tractor makes. Now, see these numbers? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's on the beat, that's correct. That bar is correct. But sometimes Tractor will get the one here or here, or here. Normally it's one too early or one too late. So you can use this knob here, it takes a few turns to move that first beat at the very beginning, first down marker, to, to the correct beat, to the one, two, three, four. It should be on the one, two, three, four. Another tip, tap here. This button lets you tap the beat out if Tractor's really struggling to work it out. And when you're finished, press this one, lock. And what lock does, didn't turn the track off, the track just ended as I pressed it, by the way, lock won't stop the music playing, but what lock does do is put a little lock on the screen right by your track, and that little lock on the screen means that that track's been beat gridded by you, you're happy with it, you're not gonna wanna change it, and stops you accidentally changing it. It's a great way of seeing the tracks you've actually taken the time to beat grid yourself, and separating them from the ones that track has done automatically and that might need your attention. So there you go, I hope you found that useful. That's how to do your beat gridding, or rather how to check and refine your beat grids spontaneously, on the fly, and as part of your workflow, just before you mix in a tune that you haven't beat gridded before. Please tune in for another great Tractor Control SH tutorial very soon. I've been Phil Morse for Digital DJ Tips.